Right, this is just a short video to show how uh, the new D3D12, so the Redix 12 backend for the uh, Nuclear UI works. So basically Nuclear UI is a C++ uh, C library, of course usable at C++, but it's written in C. Uh, uh, a single header C library that you can use to build uh, user interfaces like that one here or that one or that one so with like styles or with like themes we have themes available you can do like a nerd editor you can do full custom skinning on that so yeah a very nice and uh, handy UI library and um, the issue with that UI library is that it hadn't have a, a D3D12 demo so you can see like we have DirectX 9 we have DirectX 11 but no DirectX 12 I mean there's also not like there's no Vulkan demo as well but yeah so yeah, mainly the the issue that I had here when I wanted to integrate this into the the project uh, that we did on DirectX 12, I considered doing uh, nuclear, but at the time I was not like bothering doing uh, doing a f a full port uh, of this library to DirectX 12. However, uh, I uh, have done this recently, so I've opened up this pull request, but it seems like there is uh, nobody out here with Windows uh, who can test it, or nobody has set this for like four days. So yeah, I thought it's a quite a good idea to actually show this on video, and on one side to show you how you can easily use this also with your own DirectX 12 code, and on the other hand to kind of like post the link of the video here, so that uh, the maintainers of this library can see that everything is working fine with the backend. So you can see that this is a pull request into this master branch from my branch, but the 3 d 12 backend. And what I'm gonna do now, I am gonna clone this. So I'm gonna copy that one here. Uh, and I'm gonna open up a folder at some location. So let's go to a temporary drive. Do I have a temp folder in here? Yes, I have a temp folder in here, which probably already contains stuff, but that's okay. So I'm just gonna open up here a comment line in this temp folder. I, why can I not zoom in? Yeah, now I can zoom in. There we go. So what I'm gonna do is I get cloned from here. Uh, I think the branch could be specified with that. How did I call it? 3 d dev backend, I think. Uh, uh, let's see, it gets uh, CD, nuclear, get status. Yep, yeah, I'm on branch d 3 d dev backend, so that's good. And if I would now show the folders here, and I can now go into the demo folder. Uh, uh, I'm not on Linux. <laughs> there we go. Uh, and you can see that we now have this D3D12 folder in here because it's like my backend that I have written. So I'm going to go into that. And you can see that we get several uh, files in here. We get a build batch file, a main C, a nuclear uh, D3D12 header, uh, each HLSL source code as well as a pixel and vertex shader in case you don't want to compile this on your own or include this binary. So basically, this build.bat, if I would uh, inspect this, so... Let's maybe go into this one here as well. So if I would go into here and inspect this build file. This is uh, basically opening up Notepad++. There we go. Uh, this is uh, basically compiling this with the DirectX compiler and outputting that as a header. So FH uh, for outputting as a, a C header, nuclear D3D12 vertex shader. So now what we can now could do, we could now try to build that, but as you can see, we do have issues. We don't find the FXC or the CL. Uh, this is because uh, we are not running this from a the, from a direct uh, from a Visual Studio common prompt. So what I'm going to start is the x64 native tools common prompt for Visual Studio 2020 in my case. So just like the developer prompt that is built uh, within Visual Studio. So if you have a Visual Studio installed, no matter which version, you're going to get. Uh, some instance of this x64 native uh, tools common prompt so i'm going to open up that prompt here and what we're now going to do is we're going to change to my g drive and i'm going to go to my folder if you have it installed on your c drive you don't need to basically specify this drive with g double points to change the drive but i however I have it on a g drive so i need to go there as well so if I take a look at this i'm in the complete same directory so my temp folder nuclear demo d3d12 
and now I can actually issue build.bat and you can see that it is gonna uh, compile the shaders, so compilation header saved successfully, so my vertex shader and pixel shader have been overwritten by the now current compilation. There are two warnings while compiling this. This is coming from the original code that I have used for writing this uh, D3D12 backend. This is just some Vim API code that stays the same no matter what uh, rendering API is used. Basically, it's just uh, an issue that you that there's a size T and it's been converted to an integer, so yeah. We don't actually care about this. Basically, the Vim API is returning a size T, but yeah, we are converting this then to an integer for the nuclear function. Alright, so this should have generated this demo.exe, or maybe I could also like show this into here so you can see it a bit better and bigger. So demo.exe, and what I can do is I can run this demo.exe and it's going to open up a window here, which opened up um, there. Ah, no, I don't want to maximize it. So there you can see that we have a working instance of nuclear, we have this... Uh, buttons, I can select between easy and hard, I can click the button and you can see that I'm going to get the button press message. I can do change some of these values, I could pick a different background color and it's all going to be reflected. So as you can see, uh, it's all working quite fine. I might do a separate video series on how to properly yeah, use nuclear, but what I'm going to quickly do here now is uh, I'm going to quickly uh, include all the demos that are coming with nuclear. So defining this include all here. And I'm going to also uncomment a few of the other examples in here so that you can see that everything is working from the nuclear project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly uh, add a, a font here. So I'm just going to add this future font. I don't know if this is looking nice, but Let's let's set this future thin. I'm not quite sure. I think you need to set it. Yeah, you need to set it here. So I could like go in here and say I want to use this future font. I'm gonna also select the dark theme here to make a bit of uh, theming in here. So we're gonna have a dark theme, or sorry, the blue theme. And we're gonna have a custom font in here, and we're gonna activate this custom font, and I don't think that we need to uncomment anything else. The rest is working on its own, so this is looking good. So let's build this again. Uh, you're gonna get a few more warnings now, because uh, um, it's, it's compiling a few of these uh, other demos that uh, haven't been changed by this branch, so basically uh, I haven't changed anything on the other files that currently currently throw an, an issue, which is probably because of 32-bit, 64-bit issues, maybe. But uh, nevertheless, the demo.exe is still working, and I still get everything that I need. So you can see that the node editor has been actually uh, been created. You can see that the font is looking a bit different because I loaded in a custom font. So we have this nuclear load editor. We could, for example, ah, to toggle the grid. Uh, I, I know why I wanted the, the dark theme, because I like it more than the blue. But yeah, <laughs> that does care about this. Uh, all right, so you can see you can also like do custom drawings with a canvas here. You have an overview of all the nuclear functions for your uh, functionality. So for example, here you can see some charts. I could also like open up a pop-up a pop -up here. Okay, pop-up, cancel. Right click here to change something like, well, not like this, making this maybe a bit less saturated. Maybe adding a bit of green in here and a decent amount of blue to create a new nice color. You have tooltips available, layouting, so like several nice things that you might want to have in a in a UI library. You also get this calculator here uh, where I can do some, some calculations and get some values back, move it around. I get this old demo window that we already had previously where I can slide around and change the background color. So yeah, um, everything working uh, fine. Uh, and as you can see, if I would just open up Afterburner, for example, I hope this is not going to screw up my OBS recording, but probably not. You can also see, like, if I wait a few seconds, that it's going to show up this 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 little this little uh, information box that it, this is running on DirectX 12. Oh, I might want to restart this to make be sure that the hooks are correct from Afterburner. Yeah, so there you go. Like, 
can see up here, uh, also why I'm sc scaling, the scaling is only done when you release. So I'm not scaling the, the, the frame buffer while drawing. You can see we get jump, jump GPU activity here, D3, D12, 142 FPS, quite stable or not, but this is, this is, this instability is not coming from nuclear or any of the rendering code. This is just some general lags that are coming from the latest Windows Insider build that I'm running on the system. All right, but as you can see, everything uh, is working quite well here. We are here on the 3D12 and everything is looking good. And yeah, uh, sorry for bringing that non-expected video, but you're gonna get proper videos in the future. Of course, uh, I'm currently yeah, a bit of lagging of time, so I'm not able to produce as many videos as I want, but uh, that, that might improve in, in a few days or weeks, or maybe in three weeks it'd be all better, or in three weeks, like, things has changed, but until then I try to keep myself up with this video, with this kind of videos. And if you're interested, we can do a full series on how to how to create a nice rendering uh, with Nuclear, maybe to uh, spoil you a bit. Let me open up a project that I've just created. This is not using my new DirectX 12 back, uh, backend, this is using the default GDI backend because um, I'm currently investigating on uh, what you could do basically to uh, have a fallback layer uh, for your UI when like DirectX is not working. So for example, if you have a game, you were developing a game and you have like these Tomb Raider styles, like I'll show you what is my inspiration of that. So basically on on the Tomb Raider games, which are of course now behind the window that currently has no window moving implemented. If you start, for example, Rise of the Tomb Raider um, and wait a few seconds until it pops up, starts all the steam hooks. There we go. You kind of like get this splash window, which they screwed up again in their updates. Yeah, okay. Okay, I don't care. But basically you get some kind of like of this splash screen where you get like a nice uh, nice image. You get like the, the, the links to the website. You get options that you can pick. And then you can like select your graphic settings. So in case you mess something up and the game crashes on startup because of any of your configurations, you can always go in here and change this. Um, this is using like default Win API stuff this might use QT or whatever and basically I am looking in recreating something similar but with a bit more modern UI and for that I have created this this, this project with nuclear which is using GDI because of again not using the GPU before the game starts so that you can quickly pick stuff so you can also if you are customizing this make this appear like this is a normal windows window uh, but more about this maybe in a future video so uh, make sure to like and subscribe if you are interested in that kind of content because if i'm gonna get some likes i see that you really want that and this might uh, uh, raise the chances that i do this earlier or at all so if you're all saying no nah, i'm not interested in building ui with c++ which might be a pity because like that's the most thing that c++ is missing or C in general, like the languages that build, you get my point, like C, C++ is definitely a different thing, but but yeah. So if you are really interested in some kind of this content, then make sure to like, and yeah, we're gonna see us in the next video, which might be even on nuclear and how to get up, stuff like that. So yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, see you in the next video. Have a nice day. Bye.